Well, hello and welcome to Overdevest Nurseries. It's a beautiful afternoon in early autumn. And as you see here in the nursery, where we grow over 2,000 different varieties of outdoor garden plants, ones that have been especially selected for their proven performance right here in this region. And amongst them, we grow obviously lots of trees and shrubs and perennials and grasses and climbers too, but also, as you see, some really gorgeous roses. It seems like almost since time immemorial, mankind has enjoyed cultivating and admiring these beautiful plants. And if you've been scrolling through some of the other videos here on this channel, or better still, perhaps visiting some of our partnering garden centers, you could well have come across some of the excellent varieties that we've refined down over the years. Ones that we know are nice and hardy throughout our region. Ones that we know are excellent performers. Ones that we know do very well right here. And of course, Within that range, there's a very nice selection of different types from the old fashioned English roses to some of the shrub roses to climbers and ramblers and hybrid teas and floribundas and the ground covering ones too. Lots of different ones for different functions and all of them really beautiful. But now I want to show you one that is really rather special. This is a gorgeous little miniature rose that comes from a very familiar background known as the knockout family of roses. But this one is a little petite knockout. And what a beautiful little cutie this plant is. Just look at this dense, compact habit, only growing 18 inches high by 18 inches wide or thereabouts with lots of this nice stocky bushy habit and very bright glossy foliage that sets off these lovely fire engine red flowers so wonderfully well. And one of the interesting things about watching this plant in our trials and here in our nursery is it seems like almost any time you look at it it's in flower. Quite literally from springtime when the first buds emerge and they start to open all the way through the early part of the summer into the summer months into early autumn now and then through till we get frosts. This plant when you look at it always seems to be in flower. Nearly continuously in flower and that is really quite remarkable when you think about the degrees of changing weather and the seasons through all of that very long period. It's a plant that's hardy to zone 5 so it will grow anywhere in our region. Tight, compact, bushy, a great little performer that inherits the wonderful disease resistance capabilities of one of its parents, the knockouts family of roses you can see that I think this is a plant that we almost all have to be able to find a place for somewhere in our gardens. And that's what's really great about it too. When you think that today our gardening spaces seem to be getting smaller and smaller, we seem to be looking all the time for cute little beauties like this that will grow either as a little single plant in a tight corner, in a tight bed, in a tight space somewhere, it perhaps to the side of a patio or a deck or a courtyard, or better still, if you've got the space and you're able to mass it in a bed where you get the massed effect of all of these bright, beaming, colorful little flowers. That's when it's really effective. Wonderful on banks and slopes, but it's also a great little plant to put into a container, perhaps even into window boxes, anywhere where you're going to be able to enjoy this really beautiful floral display. Now, if you're thinking about growing it somewhere around your home, let me explain that really growing it is not that difficult at all. All they want is a nice sunny location in an average garden soil. Just an average garden soil will be fine 
as long as it's free draining. The one thing they don't like is a heavy, wet, soaking wet, saturated site. Make sure that your soil is draining and you'll find that they'll settle in there and grow very well. Dig a good sized hole, incorporate some organic matter, and of course water them well until they get established. When we send them out to the garden center, they come with a specially formulated compost that keeps on feeding them, so they don't need a whole lot of fertilizer at the start. In the first spring, when they settle in over the winter time, you can go through in the early part of the spring and prune them back pretty much like you would do with other roses. And if you want to find out more about that, here on this channel, we show you how to prune the roses, and it's the same except of course you're working with a smaller plant. At that point you can give them some fertilizer because roses are fairly hungry things and giving them a little bit of slow release fertilizer at the start of the year will get them off to a really good start. What for me is really interesting about this plant is the background story behind it. You see this variety started out life in Provence in the south of France at the very famous House of Mayon, sometimes pronounced here in the US as Medilan. The family owned firm is run by a couple of brothers and one of the brothers, Alain Mayon, is a talented plant breeder as well as running a very successful rose business. And over the years he's produced some really outstanding varieties, but this has to be one of his most notable triumphs. And what's interesting about it is that it started out, first of all, as a little miniature rose called Romantica that was introduced to European gardeners, but somehow never quite made it here to the US. They took that and crossed it with another unnamed seedling and got a bushy, compact little plant with dark green, glossy foliage. And then, very interestingly, they crossed it with double knockout. That's where this fire engine red, bright, colorful flower comes from. But also, that's where the continuity of flowering comes from and the disease resistance that I mentioned earlier. And the other thing about it too, of course, is that it bred in hardiness and heat resistance. Remember that now we're filming this in early autumn and these plants have literally been out here all summer in very hot temperatures, 90 something degrees as I well remember. And just look at them. You see how, like all good hybrids, it's able to take the best genetics of the parentage and combine it into a plant that gives you all of this superior performance. So there you are, a really beautiful, compact, bushy, continuous flowering little rose that's hardy right throughout all of our region. And I think you're probably going to enjoy it very much in lots of places around your garden. This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.